thanks for joining me as I travel the world, going from fine dining through to street food and local specialties, all in an effort to find the world's best seafood. Folks, today I've come up to Harlem, taken the three train up to 125th Street to treat myself for two reasons. I'm actually coming to a super fine dining sushi restaurant, not what Harlem is famous for. Actually, right there is probably Harlem's most famous restaurant, Sylvia's Soul Food. Fantastic food, but not what we're here for tonight. So, the two reasons to celebrate. One, I just got back from Germany for work. Love the people, love the cameras, love the culture. Don't love the food, so looking forward to this. And two, I just got through by far the busiest work month in my life, completed some really big projects. So, time to treat myself. This is a place that I've been wanting to come for ages. And to be honest, the price has always put me off. But tonight, I'm going to just cough it up and do it anyway. Really? Okay, it doesn't look like a place, but this is it. And my surprise continued inside. Whilst it was nicely decorated and the fish on display looked really high quality, the staffing wasn't really what I expected and neither was the professionalism on arrival. It was kind of, a, took me back a little bit coming to a fine dining restaurant and having it be kind of unprofessional on first arrival. The drinks menu is fairly limited. You can see some fairly premium sakis available there. They also had beer and some cocktails available. Now they had a couple of different set menus, but only the 225 was available that night only. Uh, you'll see they have a mandatory 20% service charge on top, which is a bit unusual. These higher end Japanese often don't take a service charge, it's already built in. So essentially it's going to be some items from the kitchen, 10 pieces of sushi, a hand roll, miso soup and dessert. These things are generally quite filling. Crab with a seared. Green tea hot noodle. Mm, thank you. With uh, deep fried oyster. Okay, thank you. Dish with the abalone. Abalone and okra. Now the quality of the sushi was all fantastic. Uh, overall, it was really just the experience and the service that was letting it down. It didn't feel like a special occasion. It felt like a diner with really great quality fish. Horse mackerel. <laughs> marinated seed akami. Citrus, sea salt. 
Cold knife snap up. Rosy sea bass. What kind of sea bass? Rosy. Rosy. Mm. This Where is, is that sea from? Sea salt and uh, citrus. Sea salt. Sea salt and citrus. Ah, where is the fish from? That's Nagasaki, Japan. So finishing up strong with the fatty tuna, then the sea urchin, then the tuna hand roll, and then dessert. The food really was all very good. I wouldn't say exceptional, and at this price point, it was just about the quality you would expect. It's interesting, there's an ongoing discussion among sushi circles and chefs even, what's the most important? Is it the rice or the fish? Some say 50-50, some say it's more the fish, some say it's more the rice. Having been here, I think you have to split it three ways and say it's the rice, the fish, and the overall ex experience and ambience of the restaurant. And in this case, I think the third one was lacking. Taking a look at the damage, this was an expensive meal. Like I said, I was here to treat myself, but I don't think I really enjoyed it to justify this price. With a mandatory 20% $62 tip as part of this, I really didn't think that was justified. One of the best things about going to a traditional sushi bar is the small talk with the sushi chef and normally really pleasant uh, kitchen stuff. And I just didn't get that vibe at all here. So a $400 bill for this meal was excessive in my opinion. Great food though, maybe if you went with a group of friends that would change the ambience overall and make it a better proposition. Let me know your thoughts. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon for my future journey to find the world's best seafood.